So here's your two types of radiator. This is a column radiator, which is a true steam radiator. And I say that because the inlet for the steam is at the bottom. This is a one pipe steam radiator. The steam is going to go in the bottom and the condensate is going to come out the bottom through the same pipe. The nipples that connect one section to the next, these are the sections like the slice and the loaf of bread, are on the bottom of the radiator. There's no connection between sections on the top. They get away with this because steam is lighter than air. So when it enters a radiator, it displaces the air like helium displaces air. The steam is going to go to the top of the radiator and displace the air downward. The air is going to move from section to section to section and be vented out of an air vent that's somewhere around the middle of this radiator over here in the last section. So these are called sections. These are called tubes over here on the side. One, two, three tube. That's a three tube radiator. This is a thin tube radiator, which was used for both steam and hot water. And here you can see that the inlet is at the bottom or at the top because they use these on two pipe steam as well as one pipe steam. And now we've got nipples connected completely across the top and completely across the bottom. So if we were doing this with two pipe steam, the advantage there is a two pipe steam inlet valve can be partially closed. Over here with the tube type radiator, the inlet valve has to be fully open or fully closed. If we try to throttle it, you're going to get water hammer inside the radiator and the squirting air vents because the steam and the condensate have to share that same valve. So it's got to be completely open or completely closed. It's most all of the time left completely open summer and winter and people regulate the temperature by opening the windows. So be careful too if you're troubleshooting one of these because since the valve is forever open, it's likely that the, that the internal parts of that valve will fall apart, just rot out. So the seat might fall apart and drop down into the pipe. So if the radiator is not heating, it pays to pop the bonnet on the valve to see whether the valve is still intact. Over here on the thin tube, if we sent the steam in the bottom, it would rise because it's lighter than air and go to the top. And it would then move across the top sections and we now have to have the air vent somewhere down around the bottom or the middle of the radiator over here because if we put the air vent at the top of the radiator the steam would come in the bottom go up the first section rise uh, move across horizontally and shut the air vent before most of the radiator is hot so that's why on this type of a radiator you always see the air vent installed down here at the middle of the, of the uh, lower sec of the last section if they brought the steam into the top of the radiator, the steam would, of course, go completely across the top. And that was often done with two pipe steam. So we would have, say, the steam coming in the top and the condensate coming out the bottom, typically on the opposite side. There would be a steam trap or some kind of a vapor device in that, at that point. The advantage of doing two pipe this way is because when the steam comes in the top, it's going to condense in the radiator. And the condensate is going to dribble down the inside of the sections and it's going to give you a nicer feeling to that radiator because when we make water into steam we have to add an enormous amount of latent heat to get the steam to change state even though it's still at 212 degrees so with two pipe steam and this thin tube type of radiator we're taking advantage by feeding it into the top of not just the latent heat of the steam but also the latent heat of the condensate as it dribbles down. So this sort of a radiator gave you more of a nice radiant glow. When you stood next to it, it was more even heat. It just felt better than the column radiator. So the wealthier people in the early days of central heating often went for this type of a system, and at the turn of the century, what we called vapor heating.